Hi there, I'm Bryce. I'm on the engineering team at Hero. And today we're gonna to talk about a feature that I built called the Check Checker, which is a static analysis pass inside of Clarinet that helps you identify potential vulnerabilities in your smart contracts. Um, the, the idea behind the Check Checker is that any input that you're taking from users on the blockchain, um, these are untrusted users. You don't know what kind of values they're gonna pass in to your public functions. So before you use those values to do anything important, which means anything that changes state, uh, we should have some sort of a check to verify that those are valid values. Um, this, these untrusted inputs is one of the most common vulnerabilities in any type of software, but especially in smart contracts. So specifically in a stack smart contract, we have our public functions and then those functions take in uh, parameters potentially from the users. So any of these input parameters to public functions are going to be our sources of untrusted data. Um, this example that I'm showing here is called Piggy Bank and it is, you can find it in our GitHub. There'll be a link in the comments uh, or in the description. And it's just basically a simple piggy bank contract that allows users to deposit stacks into the contract and later pull it out. And it keeps track of how much each user has in their account. Um, so the, the key data stored in this contract is this accounts map, which just maps a principal to an amount. Okay, let's look at the, the contract functions. Um, in the deposit, uh, the user passes in an amount and then they're just trying to deposit that amount into their account. So it pulls their current balance into this balance variable, the let variable, and then uh, adds that balance to the incoming amount and sets that in the map and then does a stacks transfer for that amount from the transaction sender to the contract. Now you notice that this line here is underlined in yellow, which means it's a warning. This is actually one of the check checker warnings that we're looking for. So it says use of potentially unchecked data. You see this, this, this amount here is coming from our input. So this is the, the blue squiggly up here says source of untrusted input here. So here we have input from the user, an untrusted user, and we're using it here to modify state. So here we have a warning. Now, in this case, this warning is actually not helpful to us because um, if this amount is more than the transaction sender has available, then this stacks transfer function will fail and uh, this map set will be reverted. So what we're gonna do to make up for that or to avoid that comment, sorry, to avoid that warning is to add this magic comment here. This, this magic comment starting with the hash followed by the square brackets is, um, it looks similar to an annotation in Rust. And it basically is a special type of comment that the tool can, can analyze and uh, you can provide additional information to the tool. So in this case, this, this is the simplest of all the annotations for the check checker. And it just says, allow the next expression to receive unchecked data without giving me a warning. So as soon as I added this here and saved, my warning went away here. So let's look at a more interesting example. In the withdrawal function here, <clears throat> a user is just trying to withdraw from their piggy bank. Um, so in this case, they're passing an amount again. We are retrieving the current balance. Uh, we're saving the transaction sender as customer. Um, we are setting the map to balance minus amount. And then we are doing a stacks transfer as the contract for the amount amount from from the contract to the transaction sender the original caller of this of this function <clears throat> now again we have some warnings here um, specifically this one is the most important one this amount is being used unchecked here so if we actually think about the logic behind this this really is an important warning here um, the user is withdrawing money without us actually ever checking that the amount of their balance is greater than the amount that they're withdrawing. So nothing prevents this amount from going negative here. 
Um, you'll see we also have a warning here because the mount is used here as well. So this is why this is called withdrawal unsafe, and we're, we're going to expect to see these warnings here. This next function, withdraw, um, is basically the same function, except for with this assert added here that checking that balance is greater than or equal to amount. If it's not, then we'll error with a, this error insufficient balance, which we defined above, to just return a, an error with an unsigned one. But if the amount is less than the balance, then we can go ahead and adjust our map and transfer that amount from the contract to the sender. No warnings on this one, and this one does appear to be safe. Now there's various ways that you can do these checks. So this next example uses an if instead of an asserts to do the check. Um, you can take a look at this code, um, but there's basically any, there's various different ways uh, that you can check inputs and the tool will qualify those as a check. Now the important thing, one important thing to note here is that the tool doesn't actually know whether this is the correct check or not. It just verifies that a check has occurred. So if I changed this balance to say, I just, I just filled in a random number here. I put 1 million. I save and you'll see there's still no warnings here. So the tool does not know that this doesn't know whether this check is, is the correct check or, or not. It just knows that there is a check. So you're still responsible for um, providing, to, for, for validating that the checks that you've included are the correct checks. Okay, now down here, we have another example of how to do the withdrawal function. And this one is using a, um, an optional feature in, in the check checker called Cauley filter. So you'll see in our clarinet.toml file right now, we have Cauley filter set to true. What that is telling the check checker is that we will allow uh, a function to call another function to perform a check on an input. And then we're gonna propagate that check upward to the Cauley. So here we, instead of the asserts that we saw above, we have a try and then a call to the check balance function. We pass amount. So amount is our untrusted input here. Inside of the check balance function, we do our check and we have an asserts. Um, so if this, if the balance is, if the amount is less than or equal to the balance, then we'll return okay true. If it's not, then we'll return that, we'll exit with that error again. And because this is a try, that error will get uh, passed upward from here. Um, so if I set this value, if I set this option to false, and then I save this, now you'll see we get warnings on in three different places here. That's kind of the, the default is for that to be false because technically the safest way is to always check your inputs as close as possible to the source of them, which would be in the function that they're passed into. But in reality, um, the common situation is that it's sometimes it's just convenient to test it somewhere else. And it also allows us to consolidate these checks if, if this were to get called in multiple different functions. Um, okay, let's come down to the next one. Uh, this get balance function is just a simple retrieving the balance. We can skip over that. Now this is uh, dealing with another one of the options that you may have seen when I switched over to clarinet.toml. So in this, this function, this is obviously a bit of a dangerous function to have in your bank, but I have it in here just for the example. Um, this take function basically is allowing the owner of the bank to take money from any account, even if they're not the owner. So um, we have, we're retrieving, so we, we pass an amount and we pass who to take it from. So what this let is doing is storing in the balance, it's, it's loading the, um, the current balance for the holder from and getting the amount from that. If it doesn't find it, it loads a zero and then it subtracts amount 
from that balance and stores that in our balance let variable. Then we have this asserts that checks the transaction sender is equal to the bank owner. So the bank owner is a variable we defined right here, which was set to the uh, transaction sender of the deployer of this contract. So the idea here is that, um, oh, and then after this asserts, we, we, do the, we, we set the map and we do the stacks transfer. So the idea here is that um, as the banker, I am a trusted user. So as soon as I perform this check on the transaction sender, uh, I, I should automatically trust all of my inputs. So, um, so we no longer have warnings on coming for, for the uses of amount and from here. If I turn off the trusted caller option, so I set that to false, come back here and save this, then we should have seen an error here. Oh, sorry, trusted sender. Resave, okay. So now I turn off the trusted sender option and now we see warnings for the, these usages. Uh, the trusted caller that I, that I set the first time is a very similar, except for instead of checking transaction sender, it's for checking uh, contract caller. But the same idea, if, if the caller is a trusted caller, then we trust their inputs. And then one more function we have here, which is another strange function to have in our piggy bank. But this function says, um, if a certain block has passed, then any user can take money out of any account. Uh, there's no, it's no longer checking that you have that much in your account. You can just take out of anybody else's account. So the point of this one, so this looks a lot very similar to the withdrawal function, except for you're also passing a from principle here. And um, if I get rid of this, so there's another magic comment here. If I, if I take that magic comment out, you'll see as expected, we have a warning on the use of from, which is unchecked. So we're modifying the map with this from value <clears throat> and we never checked it. So we get a warning from it. However, this special annotation filter from says, Based on this next expression, which does not actually check from, uh, as a developer, I'm telling the tool to consider from to be checked after this next function. So this is useful in various different scenarios where you have an indirect check that is not, um, not able for the tool to verify that that value is checked, but as a developer, you want to, uh, to clarify that, you want to express to the tool that yes, this value should be considered checked after this next expression. So um, that sums up my example for today. Please check out uh, the the comments in this um, in this example for some for some more details. And let me know if you have any questions. Thanks a lot.